will depend on each other, but we like to think about ourselves that way, and uh, Trump almost seems to be the epitome of that. He is the embodiment of it, and I think that's part of his strength and part of his power. I mean, I think when Elizabeth Warren says, wait a minute, you can't get from A to B without being on a road that somebody else built, you know, <laughs> nobody likes to think about that. Yeah. It's like, I'm here because I'm here. Mm -hmm. And it is a very American thing. And I think that, um, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson really did uh, write the key uh, essay that is the essence of America when mm -hmm. it was an essay he wrote, yeah. I think, in 1840 mm -hmm. called Self-Reliance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's about having a dilute. But the problem is that when you think you're self-reliant, you are delusional, in my <laughs> view, as a psychoanalyst. Right. It's a delusion yeah. because it's like you were born and you never had a mother mm -hmm. or you never needed anything. It's like um, and because of that, you can never feel grateful to somebody else mm -hmm. because it would mean that other people can do something you can't do. Right. You know, right. if you're really genuinely grateful, it means like I couldn't have this interview with you mm -hmm. without you asking questions and talking about things and right. helping me think about something and we can talk together. Right. I need you. <laughs> right. We're As dependent on each other. But I suppose in a yes. way that uh, that self-reliance is the, the American delusion and, and Trump's delusion as yes. well. Uh, to an yes. Extent. USA, USA. It is. <laughs> we don't need treaties. We Walls are enough. We don't need treaties. We're speaking with Dr. Justin Frank. He is the author of <laughs> Trump on the Couch. Um, you know, I see again and again where uh, people uh, comment on, on what they expect Trump to do or not to do, especially in the media. Uh, and, and to my mind, they miss again and again that everything he does, even negotiations with our national enemies over nuclear weapons, come down ultimately to whether it is a personal advantage for him or not. The, and, yes. and they seem to, to I mean, they had the expectation that there's going to be some larger interest involved there. And as far as I can see, it comes down to personal interest. Do you think that That's that right. fits in with his background, mentally speaking? Yes, because he there's nobody he could count on except for his father. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else he could count on. So everything is personal interest. Everything is uh, what's called phallic narcissism. I am the biggest boy. <laughs> I have the largest penis. Mm -hmm. I make these towers worldwide. I make these giant erections all <laughs> over the world. You know, and so he really, um, it is personal. It is about him. And also he feels embattled. He said the world is in a safe place. Everybody's out to get you. You have to hit back hard. Uh, there are two books he wrote that are actually not in print. And mm. both of them are really about his anger at women and his feeling that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And you can buy them, but you have to pay like 40 or 50 bucks for a copy. Mm -hmm. Um they're just never been reprinted, and I assume that he never wanted them reprinted. Um, but he he basically does fit with the American ethos of self-reliance, and he is only interested in what's good for himself. Mm -hmm. He's not alone in that. A lot of people think, is it good for me or is it good? You know, it's like the old joke, you know. Uh, I can't even tell it because it's too dirty. But uh, uh, <laughs> feel free. I would, we can always edit it for the uh, radio. Okay. Well, so it would be like uh, he'd be sitting at a bar, which of course he wouldn't be, and somebody would say, "Are you Donald Trump?" And he would say, "Yes." And the woman would say, "Well, I'd like to give you a you know blowjob or something." And he would say, "Well, that's okay, but what's in it for me?" <laughs> <laughs> that's him. That pretty much tersely sums it up. I, I yes, it does. I don't know how you could clean that up for the audience, but it's basically who he is. We're speaking with Dr. Justin Frank. He is the New York Times bestselling author and uh, clinical professor of psychology at George Washington University. His book is Trump on the Couch. One final question. Let's look at the people that he impacts. You, you look at a Trump rally. And you see the crowds that are, are cheering him on. H have you ever thought about the psychology of those crowds and the followers and why they follow him in the face 
of uh, much evidence to the contrary. What he says, they basically go along with it. What is your psychoanalysis of them or, or individuals who would be in that situation who would just nod and go along and say right on? What is the psychology of those folks, and, and is it possible to have a positive impact on that? Yes, I think one of the things that's very clear about his followers, and I didn't really spend a lot of time on this in the book because they really wanted to stick with him, Mm -hmm. but the impact and his power is that he can tap into other people's outrage. Hmm. So he is a person who is the kind of person who expresses road rage without... (laughs) the anonymity. He can do it from the bully (laughs) pulpit. He can do it from the White House. And I think that it frees a lot of other people up who have felt wronged, taken advantage of, disappointed or betrayed. And in a way, um, for want of a better term, narcissistically injured. They've been injured Hmm. by the government, by feeling that they're not really getting what they should be getting out of society. And they feel they've always had to mind their P's and Q's and watch their tongue and be political correct, clearly correct. And Trump Mm -hmm. goes past that. He says, this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. And he gives people permission to express their aggression, to express their frustration, to express their outrage. And part of the way he does that is because he has less of a superego or less of a conscience than a lot of people. So he's able to say, it's really okay to be angry. It's Mm -hmm. okay to hate. It's okay to speak up. And that's a very positive thing for a lot of people in a, in, in some ways even in a good way. I mean, unfortunately, he abuses it by creating divisions and, um, you know, hatred among groups and racism and things. But basically, he's also saying, stand up, say what you think. This is yeah. who I am. I'm just going to call Little Rocket Man, Little Rocket Man, and look what's happened. North Korea is a nice country now. That power does have a positive potential. It's just Absolutely. that it, in, in his case, it seems to connect with the, the darkest part of, uh, of what psychologists have described as the id um, instead yes. of our, our higher aspirations. Yes, exactly. In fact, there's some studies in, that are being done in uh, Germany and in Denmark called the dark, I forget what it's called now, the dark power, like just what you said, um, which is related to the id, but, he's, but the studies have shown certain leaders who have uh, this uh, grandiose narcissism and they can be Machiavellian, they can really manipulate other people, and that's what Trump does. The thing that's important to remember about him is that whatever he says about someone else is also about himself. And (laughs) that's the concept of projection. So when he says this is a con game, when he's talking about uh, the people who are opposing Kavanaugh, he's the one doing the con game. He's Mm -hmm. the one who has has officially not allowed 90% of the paper trail to come to uh, be read by uh, the Senate. I yeah. mean, they can't even have access to it. That's a con game. Or when he says that the person was committing treason, yeah. who wrote that yeah. anonymous editorial in the Times, he's also talking about himself or his fear about himself. Yes, I, and I think if, and I urge people <laughs> to read uh, Trump on the Couch. It's it's a fascinating book, but I think if you had to boil it down to four words, it would be, it's all about him. Uh, yes, that's, that's probably and that's my know. diagnosis. <laughs> that's, that is indeed he the is most Donald critical. Trump. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the most critical <laughs> takeaway. We've been speaking with Dr. Justin Frank. He is the New York Times best-selling author and clinical professor of psychiatry at uh, George Washington University. He has written uh, Bush on the Couch and now Trump on the Couch. Dr. Frank, thank you so much for taking the time today. A pleasure speaking with you and all success with uh, you and your book. Thank you, and with all of us, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Lord bless us all. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> yes. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.